and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hope Taylor and I'm a senior portrait and wedding photographer located in Charleston, South Carolina. And I'm so excited to have you tuning into my channel this week. We are gonna be talking all about one of the most frequently asked things you guys ask me to film, which is editing. I talk so much about how I believe in quick turnaround times, how I believe in same day sneak peeks. You've seen a little peek into my culling process, a little peek into my post processing, but you haven't gotten to see me edit in real time on this channel just yet. And it is happening today. So I am super, super pumped. I asked you guys on Instagram what you wanted to see, whether you wanted to see me edit a senior session or an engagement session. And an engagement session is what we're going to be editing today. Technically not an engagement session, just a couple sessions, but it is beautiful. And I'm so excited for you guys to get to see it. Before we dive into that, if you don't follow along on Instagram already, I, I would love to have you follow me. It's at Hope Taylor Photography. You can see here, that is the best place to follow along and to get to interact with me, to get to give me thoughts on my YouTube channel, vote on what you'd like to see, give me ideas for what you'd want me to film. Um, and just overall get to follow along with my life. I'd love to have you there. Also, happy December, y'all. Um, it is finally Christmas time. My tree's been up for weeks uh, and nobody's allowed to judge me for that, but we do Christmas big in the Taylor family. So anyway, happy December. Follow me on Instagram. Let's dive into some editing. I'm so excited about this video. So before we fully dive into the editing portion, I wanted to show you guys a little bit of the culling portion too. I've already called this entire session, so I'm not gonna be doing that part in real time. I have an entire video dedicated to just photo mechanic already on this channel. I use that program to cull through my images. So all that means is it's a program that allows me to go through the raw files from a session to determine which ones I'm going to keep and actually edit to deliver to my clients. So at this session, I am gonna show you how many I took and how many I'm actually going to deliver. What you do is you're just gonna open the folder right here in the left-hand corner. I have a folder called unedited raw, which is the unedited files from the session. And it's gonna open just like this. So you can see down here in the bottom left corner, I took 1,282 photos at this shoot. So it's about a two hour shoot. I overshoot, I take a lot of pictures. And so there's a ton to choose from, but I'm gonna show you how I call it down to decide which ones I'm actually going to edit. So you can see some of these have the little blue kind of line underneath them. And those are the images I've already gone through and selected to deliver to my client. So what I do when I'm ready to start calling is I'm gonna double click on the first image and it's gonna open it a little bit bigger like this. And then each number on the keyboard represents a different color. I use six to get that light blue color because as we know, I love the light blue, but I'm just gonna click through these images and click the six on each photo that I want to keep. Basically what I'm looking for is images that are in focus, images that are not duplicates, and images where my client looks flattering. So I only promise my client 60 images, but I am going to deliver a lot more than that. I typically exceed that expectation by quite a bit. I'm gonna probably deliver more than double that for this session, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and you can see in the bottom right corner where I've already clicked the blue to select the image. The beautiful thing about Photo Mechanic is it allows you to see right away, it immediately renders an image to show you which images are in focus and which ones you should select to give your client. With other programs, like if you're calling in Lightroom right now, it takes a second for each image to load for you to even be able to see like, is this photo in focus? Is it a good one? And that's wasting a lot of time when you're talking about thousands of photos. So one of the best things about Photo Mechanic is how quickly you can click through your photos to really speed up that process. So again, I'm not going to do that in real time in this video just because we already have a video about that on the channel. So once I've done this process, which I already did before the video, I'm gonna exit out of this big picture. And in the bottom right hand corner, you can kind of see this rainbow of colors right here. I'm gonna select the black in the far right corner. And what that's going to do is remove any photo I didn't select. So now it's only showing me the pictures that I've selected by clicking six on that photo. And it's taking me down to 221 images. So I called about 1200 images down to about 220. And I'm gonna now move these into Lightroom. So what I'm gonna do is hit Command A and it's going to select all of those photos. And all I do is drag and drop it over the Lightroom icon. And one of the coolest things about Photo Mechanic is it it works with Lightroom, so it's now only going to upload the photos that I've selected into Lightroom. So it's not keeping up a ton of space in my Lightroom catalog for no reason. It's only uploading the ones I'm going to use. So I'm gonna create a catalog for Dakota and Kyle. And Dakota's a photographer too, so this shoot was about 50% a couple session for her and Kyle and about 50% content for her brand and her photography business. And they are so beautiful and it was so fun. So not an engagement session, just a couple session, but beautiful nonetheless. So I'm gonna upload them into Lightroom real quick. And you can see it automatically selected only the photos that I selected in Photo Mechanic and I'm just going to click import. So I'm not going to edit every single photo for this video because it does take me about two to three hours to edit a full session like this, but I am gonna edit just a couple from each set because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit these today as if I was editing sneak peeks right after the session. You've heard me talk about this multiple times, but I truly believe in the power of same day sneak peeks, whether it's a portrait session or a wedding day, senior, couple, engagement, doesn't matter. I go home 
Lightroom and I call the full session like you just saw in Photo Mechanic. I do the whole shoot and then I upload them all into Lightroom. And then what I do is I go through and kind of call a second time to pick eight to 10 sneak peeks that are gonna go on my Instagram stories and one will go on my Instagram feed. So what I do is I go back through these photos very quickly and I click P on each photo that I want to keep and P stands for pick. So I'm literally picking eight to 10 photos that I want to ultimately use as a sneak peek. The first step though, before I even do that, is I'm gonna click on the first photo and go to develop. And I am going to apply my preset. You can see over here, this is a preset that I've created for my business. It basically, the goal is to bring back the pop in the raw file. So if you shoot raw, then you've probably seen that it really strips the color and kind of the richness out of the photo. So what my preset does is it adds that pop back into the picture. It increases the saturation, brings down the blacks, and just kind of brings the richness back into the photo. Uh, so that's the biggest thing that I'm going to do first is I'm going to apply that preset. I also go to detail. I'm gonna go to 75 and I'm gonna increase noise reduction just a bit to help with kind of some skin smoothing and removing any noise. And then I go to lens correction and I hit enable profile corrections. And that takes any warping or like weird edges um, off of the photo that allows it to be a little bit more light and bright throughout. And then what I'm gonna do is go back to library, scroll down, select the last photo and hit command shift S. And what it does is it's going to sync all of the photos in the gallery to have that same edit. So it's going to give all the images my preset and those settings I just applied. And that way I know I'm starting from not really a blank canvas, but the Hope Taylor preset canvas. I do sell this preset inside my photography course. It's not for sale. It's just a preset right now. But if you want to get your hands on it, it is inside that course. So while these settings are all pasting, I'm going to go ahead and scroll back up. And what I'm doing, I'm going to pretend this is real time as if I just finished a shoot and I'm preparing for sneak peeks as I'm deciding, okay, I want to make sure I have a variety of images to share from the shoot. One of the things I pride myself on is getting a lot of variety of outfit and location at a shoot. And so I want to make sure I represent that in my sneak peeks. So I'm going to try to pick one to two photos from each set that we did. So each location, each outfit, I want to have one to two photos to represent that section of the shoot. So I want this to be the best of the best. I really believe in the power of curation. I believe in showing the type of work that you want to shoot more of. Um, so I'm gonna show the best of the best images. So as I'm clicking through, I love that this shot is far away. So I clicked P on that shot. I'm looking at the big preview here in the top left corner to determine which of these I'm going to use. I've already called them. So I already know that they're all in focus. They're all good to go. I just wanna add a lot of variety. So I picked a far away wide shot up here to the left. So I'm probably gonna pick a close up of Dakota as another one from that set. And then I'm gonna pick one more because I just really like this set of her against the white. It's a different location, so a little bit more variety. Again, I'm just clicking P on all of these photos. And then I really want one from this set. I'm gonna get a little more variety, so I'll do a walking one here. I like this one the best for framing with that palm tree. And then I'm gonna do one more close up for variety. I love this one of them both smiling. I think it's super sweet. So then because I've already gotten two photos from that set, I'm just gonna keep scrolling. I really loved the lighting right here. So I'm gonna get a different pose I haven't shown yet. I'll do the forehead kiss. And then I'm gonna get a close up here too. Let's do this one of Dakota. I'm gonna keep scrolling. I'd love to get one more of them as a couple right here because this was a different little spot with that ivy. Great, and then I feel like I have enough with that outfit. So I'm gonna skip this little set that we did in front of the pink wall just because we have so many with that outfit. I really love this set with her hat. So I'm gonna grab one of these that's wide and then I'll grab one of these that's more close up from the stairs. You can kind of see that I'm just trying to grab one from each set and I am gonna grab one extra from this set of her with her cute hat. I wasn't super excited about this last location. It just wasn't my favorite for branding purposes. It doesn't match my colors and aesthetic just quite as much. So I'm just gonna select one from that last set. And then what I do is I go up to view, sort, and I sort by pick, and it's going to shoot those. How many did I select? Let's see, 12. I ended up picking 12. This is what I always do. I always do way more than I say I'm gonna do. Um, but I ended up picking 12. So these 12 images up at the top are what I'm going to throw a quick edit on to post on social media. I edit very quickly. I do everything in my business very quickly. I talk very quickly. It's just what I do. I move fast. And so I don't do any crazy Photoshopping. I don't do any extensive editing to perfect every little detail. I do a very general color and Lightroom edit. And if there's some type of big blemish or um, like hole in her shirt or stain or something like that. I'll edit that out of everything, but I'm not taking hours to perfect every single image. That used to be a misconception and like this weight that I put on myself as a photographer to only post absolutely Photoshopped perfection images. And I actually have found that my ideal client prefers the more natural, candid, true to color, true to life looking images. So I don't perfect every single image, um, but I do add my um, color correction and all of my editing to each image before I post. So 
The first thing I notice about this image is it's a little warm. I tend to, when I'm shooting on my Sigma lens, it shoots a little bit warm. So I'm gonna cool it off pretty majorly here. Probably gonna go down to 5,600. I shoot with Kelvin, and so I had it set to 6,000 probably at this time, but I actually might even go cooler than that. I might try 5,500 here because I am focusing on skin tones. I'm gonna straighten it really quick. When I'm looking at images like this, I am focused on skin tone. I want their skin tone to look true to color, and I'll focus on everything else later. Their skin tone looks pretty true to color to me at this point. And the only other thing I'm gonna do is there's a lot of green in this image, so I'm gonna bump up the tint just a smidge to like 11 or 12, and that'll help combat any of that green hue and make their skin look even more true to color. I'm actually pretty happy with this image as is. My goal is that I always want to shoot to get them right in camera to the best of my ability and so I don't have to do a lot of editing and that's pretty much how I'm able to edit so quickly is that I've mastered being able to shoot like this in camera. And so the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down the highlights a smidge and I'm going to bump up the shadows a smidge to balance it out and make it look a little more even. So here's the before. And here's the after. You can tell they're pretty much the exact same. I just brought that richness back and I've cooled it down just a bit to be a little bit more true to color. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna sync that photo with the other two photos that were taken at that location. This is another way that I speed up my editing process by a lot is I'm syncing the edits as I go. Any photos that were taken with the same location, I'm going to sync the edits. So I synced this one up of Dakota. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so it's gonna be a little dark. I'm gonna brighten it, I'm gonna straighten it and crop out that column that didn't look cute in the right. And then let's bump up the exposure. I'm gonna bump it up 0.5. And then I'm actually gonna bring the highlights down a bit and I love it just like that. So my images are very bright. They're a smidge exposed for some taste, um, but I like, them to be, I like them to be very, very bright. And so you can tell here, my goal is for the image to be lit in a very clean and even way without harsh shadows, but without blowing out any of her facial features. So I'll drop highlights as much as I need to to accommodate that. And I'm actually gonna cool this image off a little bit more. I feel like her skin tone looks a little orange to me. So there we go, that'll be the final image. Um, you can see before and after, I'm basically just cleaning it up a bit. I'm actually gonna brighten it a smidge more. Yep, I like it just like that. So I'm gonna brighten it, I'm going to even out those shadows a bit, crop out the background, straighten it, and that's pretty much it. I just wanna make sure her skin tones are true. So we're gonna go to the next one. I'm gonna brighten this one by quite a bit too. Let's see, I'm gonna bring the highlights down, I'm gonna bump the shadows up even higher than I did in the last image to balance out some of the contrast that I'm seeing. I'm gonna come down, crop it so her face is centered, and I'm gonna cool it off just a bit because I still feel like I'm getting that orangey hue. And I'm gonna bump up the tone a little bit because I still see a little bit of green. And you can see there's the before and the after. Very clean, that white background doesn't have any distractions. There's no harsh shadows on her face. It's just a very clean, true to color image. So let's jump to the next set. I'm probably gonna do a lot of the same cooling down on these images. It was the morning time. We were getting some weird shadows in this location. So I'm gonna bump up the exposure by, let's just try 0.4, but I'm gonna drop the highlight lights down. So that's one of the ways that I make my images really bright so that the background and the subject are evenly lit without having harsh shadows but without blowing out their facial features as I'm dropping the highlights and I'm bumping the shadows to compensate. So I'm going to straighten this a little more. I actually might even cool it off a smidge more and then bump that tint just a smidge. So there we go. I've removed that yellow hue. I've removed any like weird green hue that was happening from the palm trees above them. And I bumped up the shadows and dropped the highlights so none of their facial features are blown out. And then I'm gonna sync that with the image next to it. This one is a little too cool for me. So I'm gonna brighten it just a smidge and I'm also gonna warm it up just a smidge. And I'm gonna crop it because I wanna make sure that there's not too much of that house on the left. Perfect, so again, you can see the before and after. Just brighten it, making the light even, and making sure it's not too warm. I'm gonna edit these two a little bit more um, like I would be if I wasn't filming, so a little bit more like real time, true to what I would be normally doing. So you guys can just see what it looks like for me to edit. So you saw me cool that one off. I'm gonna cool it off even more. I'm gonna bump the tint to combat that greenness. I'm gonna drop some of that. Oh, you know what? I just realized this happens sometimes. His uh, mouth didn't all the way connect with her face, so I'm gonna hit U to unpick that one, and then I'm gonna select the one next to it where they were smiling instead. And I'll go back to that edit that I just did right here, because I was already on my way to liking that edit. There we go. And I'm gonna copy it, and I'm gonna go back to the one that I just picked to fix it and I'm gonna hit paste, and then I'm just gonna continue editing from there. So I actually might warm it up just a smidgen. I'm gonna increase the exposure a smidgen and straighten it out. Boom, and you can see the before and after, cooling it down, brightening it up. That's pretty much the goal of every single one of these edits. So I'm gonna cool this one off quite a bit. We moved locations and I didn't change my white balance in time, and we had a lot of like orange kind of glow happening from the building behind us. The really glowy sunrise light was bouncing off of it. 
I'm gonna increase the exposure. That was a little too, oops, clicked auto. That was a little too much. I'm gonna bump this up a smidgen. Perfect, so again, before and after, cleaning that light up, cooling it off. I'm gonna jump to this next image. I'm actually gonna sync these because they were taken in a very similar location. Perfect, you can see it cooled it off just a smidge too much, brightened it a smidge too much, so I'm gonna change that up. Perfect, and you know what? I actually don't love that walking one as much as I thought I did, so I'm gonna sync the edits with the one next to it and re-pick one that I like better. Ooh, I like that one much better. I'm gonna click pick, it's gonna shoot it back up to the top for me. I'm actually going to warm it up even a smidge more. Perfect, and then we're gonna move over here, brightening this one up quite a bit. That was probably a little too much. Bump those shadows because she has that hat on. I wanna be able to see her face. And we're cooling it down again quite a bit and bumping up the tone to remove, or sorry, the tint to remove that kind of green hue that we have. So cute, I loved this outfit. This was so, so precious in person. Love it, beautiful. And then I'm gonna do a similar edit here. I'm not gonna sync these because this was a pre-drastically different location when we moved to shoot here. So. I'm gonna edit this one separately, but I'm just bumping exposure, bumping shadows. Perfect, I'm actually, yeah, I like that one like it is, I think. Perfect, we'll move to this one. I am gonna sync these because they were the exact same spot. A little too bright, perfect. I'm gonna bring the highlights down even more. I'm gonna bump the shadows up to 45 for this one. Again, because that hat, I don't wanna, um, be blocking any of her cute face. I'm gonna cool it down quite a bit because her skin has that orangey tone. I'm gonna bump up that tint a little more to combat that green. Perfect. And then last shot right here, I'm gonna crop it in to get that little black thing off the wall. I'm gonna cool it off quite a bit. Again, I'm focusing on skin tone here. I wanna be sure that their skin tone is true to color, not super orange for any reason. Dropping highlights, bumping shadows. I actually think that's a little too cool. So we're gonna go back up a smidge. Drop the exposure a smidge. And I feel good about that one. Perfect, so then I do a quick little glance over right here where I can see them all and make sure there's not one that stands out that's like way too orange or way too blue or vice versa. And then what I do is I select them, file, export, and then I am going to um, name them Dakota and Kyle. I do a custom name sequence, so it will export these as Dakota and Kyle one, Dakota and Kyle two, Dakota and Kyle three. Um, it makes it super easy to keep track of them. And I also don't do anything crazy for file settings. So I do quality 60, I don't resize to fit anything, um, and I'm just gonna export those into a folder, airdrop them to my phone, and upload them to social media. So guys, I hope it was helpful to see me edit in real time. I'm gonna link my photography course down in the description below if you would like to learn more about seeing this in real time and seeing my full course of how I shoot, light, and edit all of my images to teach you exactly how to produce images like this. But I hope this video was helpful and I will see you guys next week. Bye.